So we got another piecewise defined function. Same kind of question. Uh, we got to graph it, and then we have to ask ourselves, uh, does the limit exist? Um, again, the point of differentiation, the point of consternation, <coughs> is exactly x equals 1. So I'm going to do two charts. I'm going to do x and then x squared minus 1. Yeah. And then, Perfect. now for this chart, I'm using x smaller than 1. So I'm going to start at 1, and I'm going to go down. Oh, the beauty of mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, x squared minus 1 is going to be 0, minus 1, 0, 3, uh, but the important thing that we're going to note here is that this guy right here is a hole. Okay? And then for the other chart, I'm going to do x and 1 minus root x. And I'll plug in x is 1. And I'll get 0. And then um, I'm going to plug in, you know what, I, I'm going to do 4. Um, and then I'll get 1 minus the square root of 4, 1 minus 2, I'll get negative 1. And then I'll plug in 9, and I'll get negative 2. Um, of course, I plugged in those because those give me nice values for a square root of x. But again, this is also a whole. Okay? Uh, let's put it all together into a graph. I'm going to pause the video and make axes. Okay, and there we go. There are some axes. Now I'm going to plot these points. Um, and you know what might actually be easier? Is if I do this. Let's put this. Look at that. I can do this right here. And it gives me my chart for easy access. Um, we'll do the one on the left first. When x is 1, x squared minus 1 is 0. And of course that's a whole. When x is 0, it's a negative 1. When x is negative 1, it's 0. And when x is negative 2, it's 3, which we'll guess is sort of up there. Uh, now we'll do the one on the right. Um, we actually duplicate the point at 1, 0. Um, then we get uh, 0, comma, sorry, I'm, we get 4, comma, negative 1. And then 9, comma, negative 2, which is like somewhere over here. Okay, zoom that back out a little bit. And there we go. Uh, now, of course... The uh, astute viewer probably says, I know how to graph those. I'm super fancy, know how to graph everything. And you know what? More power to them. Um, but uh, we're not so super fancy. We, we rely on points. Here's an intermediate question that actually showed up on the exam. Um, what is the domain of this function? Well, I mean, you can see now that they're connected uh that it's the domain is going to be from negative infinity to one non inclusive exactly and from one non inclusive to infinity exactly so we have this big yeah. gaping hole uh, i made the mistake cuz i actually graphed this one incorrectly and they were right, not right. connected right uh so you know i didn't get the right so way. this carefulness of paying attention to the hole and yeah. whatnot is this connecting with like you think you're going to yeah, actually do this yeah. this this method here sure okay and That's of course, the only way to really, I mean, yeah. for me, to plot points, you know, that, uh, that, that will uh, prevent me from making mistakes. Right. From, it uh, takes your mind also off of the, the imposing task of creating this graph for all values, um, and instead you're more or less painting by number. Yeah, because right? I'm essentially, what I did was I pulled the graph out of my butt, I just said, oh, this is... You know, a parabola opening upside down or whatever. Right, exactly. That's it. what everybody does. Um, and that's why people make mistakes, you included. 
Uh, but what's the range here? So we agree the domain is negative infinity comma 1, uh, put it together with 1 comma infinity. And the range is all real numbers. Right, because uh, even though this looks right here like it might not be so... Yeah, but it's you know, going eventually, down yeah. to... We'd have to, yeah. we have to zoom way out, right? Uh, so the range um, is... Right. Um, okay, so that's just a little aside there. Okay, so now we got our graph cooked up. Um, and what's the next thing? Uh, does the limit exist? And we know this is a loaded question. This has got two sub-questions. This involves the limit as x goes to 1 from the negative direction. You added this part, right? And what do you mean? I mean, th that question didn't actually appear on my exam. No, not last exam. Right, I'm, I'm adapting the problem from last exam okay, yeah. for the future. Yeah. Uh, limit x goes to 1 from the positive direction, f of x. And uh, the question is, what are these guys? Right? Yeah. Um, let's and, look at the graph. Uh, well, let's, let's actually do it with just the formula. Okay. Um, oh, okay, you can do that by... Uh, right, so this, this tells us that x is actually less, less than, than 1. one. And this tells us that x is bigger Greater. than 1. So then you use those formulas. Exactly. Up there. So I just plug 1 into x squared minus 1. And that's 0. And I get that this thing is equal to 0. And ditto for... The second one, the square root of 1 is 1 and 1 minus 1 right, is 0. Right, right. So um, the function... Uh, so now that would actually tell us yes mm -hmm. and limit x goes to 1 period. Yeah. Not from either side is equal to zero. Um, but now let's go to the graph and verify it uh, in a picture. Um, and we'll even zoom in further. As I am approaching one from the negative direction, if I am on the function, this is the path that I'm taking. And we see the y values over here zero. are approaching zero. Likewise, if I'm approaching one from the right, same deal. Uh, and when I say approaching one, I mean I'm hovering over x values yeah. that are marching towards one. But I'm measuring what's happening on the function, and the way I measure what happens on the function is I look at the y-axis, and we can see that in both cases, y is going to zero. Okay. Um, now I mentioned in the other video the word continuity, continuous, and I'm going to do it here too, even though we haven't actually formally talked about it. Uh, I'm putting it in there because we will eventually talk about it. We would say here that limit as x goes to 1 of f of x exists, right? But f of 1 does not exist. Uh, in other words, it's undefined. And we would call this then uh, x equals 1 is a discontinuity. of f of x. But all is not lost. It's kind of a discontinuity for stupid reasons. Um, meaning that a clever person could go in there and they could color in this point if they wanted to and everything would be fine. So we call this a removable discontinuity. Again, those are just words for right now, but uh, it's sort of a preview of where the conversation is going. Yeah. In terms of limits and functions and everything.